my name is uh, Katarina Batista and I am a, I'm a manga artist and an illustrator and also a manga art teacher. So I teach at libraries and schools and teach kids and teenagers about how to draw manga. And my name is Natalia Batista and I'm the sister of Katarina. We are both in the studio Nosebleed Studio. So we are a Swedish manga group and I'm also a manga artist and a manga teacher and I also teach at the, the foremost, the most prominent comic school in Sweden called Serieskolan in south of Sweden. So I'm a teacher there as well. So you just called it um, the most prominent manga school in Sweden? Are there many? Is there a big community in Sweden? There is a big community for manga, uh, for comics, uh, not only manga, uh, but there are several schools or several educations for comics, professional schools. But this, this is the one that has, um, that is the most prominent through time. It's been doing it for 15 years, uh, and each year about 30 people ed uh, are educated and uh, examined from the school. So, which means this is the very uh, unique for the whole of Sweden because most of the schools that have comic school studies are mostly uh, university level schools, so it's only a couple of courses here and there. Okay. So, um, the, the manga you produce, um, you produce them in your spare time because you are actually tutored and. Yeah. Uh, you Basically, I do, I do it for, uh, for full time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's very hard to make yourself um, a living, earning a living with manga. Uh, but you can, you can do part time and do like, as I said, teaching um, uh, at manga or uh, comic art um, in schools. Um, to, uh, to actually be able to live from it. But just drawing manga and illustrating is very hard. Uh, it's hard work to, if you would just live on it. I do, I do work, uh, when, I do, when I don't work at school, I work 30% at the school, so it's only part time. And then rest of my time I put into doing comics and illustrations. So most of my time I do uh, comic books and I produce about one book a year. Uh, and right now I'm working on one series called Sword Princess Amaltea, which I'm also putting up online for free in English. Uh, so it's available on swordprincessamaltea.com. Okay, yes. And in general, how is the Swedish uh, comic and manga community? Maybe in comparison to the German as well? If you have already uh, gained an expression, is it bigger? Is it comparable at all? It's the, I think what, is, what we have been speaking about is uh, the fact that there's a, di a, a, di a, di a separation between manga and other comics. In Sweden we do have manga conventions like this one. Uh, that mostly the artist alley is not a big, as big as this one. Uh, usually the artist alley ends up in the corner somewhere. So it's too bad it's not really like, it's not as appreciated as here at Dokumi. So I'm really glad we're here. Uh, but at the same time in Sweden we have more like people doing Tumblr art, people doing uh, Cartoon Network style and they still hang out at the manga conventions. So I think the differences are that we have much more um, mix of styles. Uh, but at the same time we're not as big, we don't have as many artists. Yeah, here it's very focused on the very typical um, manga uh, style, but, but we have many more um, like uh, indie comic uh, inspired by manga. So it, it's kind of a mix uh, in many styles. And uh, I, we do appreciate it in this a, a lot because we are into the manga manga style, the yeah. clearly Japanese inspired style. Mm, so yeah. we feel we're very much at home here. Mm, uh, yes. That's good. Um, but also, uh, also I would like to say that um, the biggest convention in Sweden is 10,000 but 10,000 isn't the biggest in Germany as we've heard so uh, the scene is big in Sweden but I wouldn't say it's as big as in Germany. Of course not. Just, Germany. I mean we're a much smaller country, I think we're a tenth of as many um, citizens so the, 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 everything is a tenth of what, what Germany has. <laughs> Uh, but also uh, in Germany you produce, uh, you have many um, publishers. publishers who produce manga, but in Sweden we almost have none. We have one that is publishing very small manga uh, titles, but uh, like very indie manga from Japan, but uh, no manga um, from Japan, like bigger ones. They, they all uh, quit. Uh, 
actually, actually, we did have uh, together with you uh, in the 2000 uh, up to 2010. We had a boom of manga, so there was a lot of people reading, a lot of manga imported and translated. Uh, but probably because of a lot of factors, but especially because of uh, it was very cheap. The manga was very very cheap, so the publisher didn't earn enough money. And when the kind of the the sales was dipping. Uh, they stopped producing it. Today, except for us and except for one publisher who do these uh, indie manga titles, there's no one producing manga in Sweden, like publishing manga. Mm. Most of the teens, they know English too well, so they read yeah. scanlations online yeah. or from the English-American markets. <laughs> yes. But there are some Swedish manga artists that are known. Natalia and some others uh, that are known, but it's very hard to get published in Sweden with just manga because they sell it. They say it doesn't sell, but there is a, there is a big uh, convention scene. So the readers are there, but somehow the publishers doesn't really reach them because there is a market. So maybe you can tell us something about your manga publication, the Swedish manga story. Yeah. What is it about and yeah. Uh, our manga is, uh, we would like to do in manga style, like the Japanese, but we want to do it with uh, Swedish stories about Swedish characters and Swedish traditions and Swedish history. Because we think instead of doing things about Akira or Yuki or Samurai and ninjas, we can do something about what Swedes can put on the table. Uh, and that's what we want to appreciate people um, or recommend people to do to talk about their own uh, cultures or where they live or the city they live in. It's much easier. Because you can go out and take reference photos, you can yeah. you know the school system, everything. And also the risk about taking another culture and interpreting it without even living there uh, is that it's, it very easily becomes prejudice, and uh, yeah. uh, and that's why it's best to just tell your own, uh, tell about your own country because you have so many stories to tell. You just have to think about it. So, um, have you got any favorite manga? Are you watching anime? We read manga more, uh, but uh, the, my favorite manga uh, is about um, uh, a manga uh, geek club, like otaku club, uh, in Japan. Uh, so it, it, the name is Genshiken, and it, and it's about like friends uh, talk about their favorite manga. So and since uh, me and Natalia were part of a geek uh, manga club when uh, or an otaku club when we were uh, younger, it's just like uh, reliving your teenage yeah, years again. Yeah. Very and for me as well, I like Genshiken a lot, especially the second season manga, mm. uh, where they talk a lot about Fuyoshi, uh, the yaoi yeah. nerds, which uh, we we were both yaoi nerds, yeah. and I'm still. Uh, and also, I like a lot the Bakuman, which uh, talks a lot about how to become a manga artist, and I know it's big in, G in Germany as well. Um, and I love Bakuman because it, it really teaches you not only the traits, but also the tricks of how to gain your audience, mm. which is very interesting. So. I also have a favorite uh, manga artist, and she her name is uh, Kaoru Yuki, right? Ka Kaoru Mori, sorry, yes. Kaoru Mori, uh, and she just released a manga. She's working on a manga right now that's called A Bride Story, uh, and it, it's her art is just so beautiful. Uh, so even if some of her characters could be a bit flat sometimes, the art totally <laughs> weighs up for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <It's> very interesting. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>